Howdy there YouTube. Just want to start this video off by saying that any offensive or Holocaust denial comments will be immediately removed and so just don't post them. <clears throat> anyway, this video is going to start off with the purchase of this book a couple weeks ago and I just got around to looking at it during Christmas time and this is a two volume set published in 1943 which is important also the dedication here 1945 anyway this book is copyright 1943 here and it is World War II and Illustrated History by Lieutenant Colonel Frank Monahan and the important thing I usually buy I have a whole bookshelf of World War II books of course like everyone else that is interested in the war and I always look for specifically unit uh, markings and vehicle markings and weaponry etc and I noticed on page 127 here in volume 1 there's something quite interesting about this photograph and if you look closely here these bodies here are actually drawings. They're actually drawn into the photograph. They're not part of the original photograph. I mean, they're quite obviously drawings. And so this photograph, this book being published probably in early 44 before the liberation of any of the death camps I started to wonder why are these people drawn into this photograph and so if you look at the caption here new order comes to Poland it says Nazi firing squad executes Polish civilians photograph was found on a Nazi flyer shot down over England and if you see here the um, Attribu attribution is to European. Now if you look through this book there's no um, the European is just listed kind of just like that. A lot of these other ones have you know Julian Bryan picks, uh, there's Keystone, there's different attributions to the different pictures but this one just says European <clears throat> and so got me to wondering who drew these pick who drew these dudes in here who drew these two figures and then you start looking at like some of the highlights aren't really quite consistent you know and here's the sun coming from this angle well where's this guy's shadow you know these kind of look like shadows coming off here but where's this guy's shadow it looks like it's going this way right there's some inconsistencies with the rest of the photograph and if these guys are shooting here why are these guys just kind of standing here and what's going on back here this doesn't necessarily look like anything kind of just looks like pieces of woods or something so that got me thinking you know what's the history of this photograph and where did it come from and and what's this story about a Nazi flyer being shot down over England and you know, this, something doesn't make sense with this picture here. So that got me uh, looking into some research and to uh, try to figure out the history and what might have happened to this photograph. So I did some image searching on Google and actually this photograph does come up quite a bit. But it doesn't quite look like this. It looks actually a little bit different and here it is and you can notice there's no two extra people drawn into it and there's also some other uh, things that you'll notice you notice that this picture is has a little bit more background to it than this picture here it's kind of this is a cropped copy of this same image and there's also some differences in the negative. If you'll notice on this one, it's got a white spot here. And this guy does not have a white spot. It's not as definitive. 
there is this kind of weird it, it kind of looks like it might be a cutout for his arm but you'll notice this one has kind of a border inset into it there's you know there's some discrepancies here with the the negative as far as the the dots and stuff lining up you know he's got some extra dots on his uniform that don't appear in this one but again this one being doctored who's to say that they weren't something that was done during this the change in this photograph so anyway <clears throat> it's really hard to see any of the details on the uniforms as well to identify the soldiers that are just kind of silhouetted with these kind of strange highlights and you can't really tell anything about their equipment on in either photo anyway this photo comes back as a uh, photo from the United States Holocaust Museum and it's photo number 98093 German police execute poles at the edge of the Usbornia Grove just outside of Bochnia sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly <clears throat> it says the original caption of Polish reads from a series of Nazi crimes during the occupation of Poland Forest near Bochnia, execution in the forest, published by the Jewish Historical Commission of Katowice. This widely circulated copy print is one of 26 photographs contained in an album found by Jacob Ingra in an apartment in this place after the war. Many of the photographs are believed to have been taken by a soldier with the SD Sipo following the invasion of Poland in 1939. Additional photographs depict Einsatz group and activities at sites throughout Nazi-occupied Eastern Europe and are likely additions to the album. Now, these were found after the war in 1945-6, I would assume. <coughs> and also the date of the photograph is listed as 16 December 1939. And I found actually different dates from 16th to 18th December for the events that are linked to this photograph. And it did actually occur. It was an actual event. It was uh, a retribution for an attack on a guardhouse or factory gatehouse. And there are actually some other photographs from the event which are poignant to this discussion this being another one this is uh, from another angle and uh, in the larger picture there's actually you can see another man standing here you can see his arm here and there's another man standing just to the side here so there's two groups of men standing close together and you can see actually now in this photograph why you can't see any detail in this is because they're wearing very sparse equipment I mean they're not even wearing gas mask containers and if you see in any pictures of German frontline troops during World War II you know they always have the gas mask containers so these guys don't even have they got a bread bag, a canteen, and a bayonet and you can see some of the reflections from their web gear here, their silver buttons, their black collars and their black epaulettes here, or collar tags. Um, you can see those bright parts and you can actually see those reflections in some of the, uh, the web gear there in this photograph, as well as the other one that the uh, the Holocaust Museum has. Now this is an, the third picture I believe from this same event and this is also kind of cropped from the printing. But you can see these guys have the same great coats. They've got a, what appear to be Czechoslovakian straight bolt Mauser, so 24T rifles. And you can see that also in this picture. You can definitely see the straight bolts of the rifles. 
uh, jutting out as well as the uh, the wood in front or uh, behind the rear sight here you know the handguards are pretty distinctive on those Czechoslovakian rifles <clears throat> so anyway in this picture you can now see why those guys were standing to the side because they're now here digging the, the graves for these poor fellows down here that were executed and in this picture you can see the ties on the hands there's two sets here that are pretty clearly visible so um, these guys here are these guys here that's why they're not concerned that's why they're not uh, you know facing towards the firing squad I'm assuming you know these are this is all conjecture of course I'm just an amateur but this is uh, pretty compelling that you know this guy's got his hands tied and then these guys also have tied hands so this of course town still exists today and was divided into a ghetto um, at a later part in the war after this event but it appears that this possibly this is a, a Google Street view of the town today and although it's not as clear when you first see this photograph if you overlay this today you can kind of see there's a building back here that possibly could be part of this uh, section of the photograph that is would be really hard to detect in this cropped version so they didn't they didn't say that they exactly knew where this event occurred so I'm not saying this is either but there's a lot of uh, similarities kind of with the terrain and over on this side now there's a uh, large like container lot like I said this is a children's playground I printed it in black and white just so it can kind of compare there's kind of a berm here although in the there's a great uh, website I'll put in the description that actually uh, talks about not this particular event but some of the executions and ghettoization later on in the town that happened and they uh, they suggested that maybe the event happened uh, towards the Jewish cemetery side of the hill or the the grove but I don't know you know they they would know better than I would just very confused about why this photograph appears in a book that's dated two years before this photograph appears in this collection found by uh, Mr. Jacob Ingra in that apartment so um, I'm hoping this sparks some kind of debate and hopefully people will you know look more into or know more about this particular incident and you know all of this was sparked by some very crudely drawn possibly British inserted propaganda figures into this photograph in this book it's not really something that I'm all that interested in but when I saw that you know you really need to investigate things like that because just because it appears in a book doesn't mean that it's true and it's definitely you know I definitely learned something by looking into it and like I said I hope that this brings these the victims of these crimes some kind of uh, lasting peace so thanks for watching and please leave a comment below as long as it's respectful and doesn't involve any kind of uh, Neanderthal thinking so thank you and goodbye